Hi, my name is Kaylee Camper, and you're about to watch a short glimpse of the past 16 years of my life. To start off, I might as well begin with my parents, Darren and Elsa Camper. My parents met each other on October 18th, 1997, through mutual friends. They decided they liked each other more than friends and ended up getting married on January 12th, 2002. Almost two years later, on December 27th, 2003, they had me. I was supposed to look like this, but I ended up looking like this. Now, I know what you're thinking. Elsa, isn't that a Disney character's name? Yeah, it is. And it just makes her an even cooler mom, because now we get stares from kids at Starbucks when they call her name. My mom is the most kind-hearted and loving person I've ever met, and quite honestly, will ever meet. She always knows how to cheer me up when I'm having a bad day, or knows exactly what advice to give me when I'm having trouble with friends, even though most of the time I don't listen to her. But it would have saved me a lot of heartache if I did. I never question that she's my mom because she's goofy and silly all the time like me, and whether we're around each other, we're constantly laughing and being stupid. She always tries to have a positive outlook on life and it encourages me to be more positive too since I tend to be a little negative sometimes. Whether it's dancing in the car or going on adventures after soccer games, she's with me through every step of my life and I don't know where I'd be without her. If I had just three words to describe my dad, they'd be hardworking, caring, and wise. He's constantly putting my mom and I first in any situation and works hard to provide and care for us. No matter what, I can always count on my dad to help me and be there for me. When I was younger, my dad would work at night, yet still get up every morning around 7 a.m. to take me to school. My dad guides me through life and is always right by my side whenever I'm having trouble with something. He knows how to cheer me up by making me laugh so I can't breathe and also knows how to go on a fun adventure. Whether it's dirt bikes or quads, my dad loves to go out to the desert and drive around. We don't go as much anymore, but when we do, I love to bond with him and go on fun adventures together. I'm not able to go to the desert as much anymore because of soccer. Ever since I can remember, I've loved playing soccer and nothing else makes me feel as good as when I'm out on the field. I've tried basketball, dance, and volleyball, but none of them make me feel the same. My mom asked me if I wanted to play for the local kids league when I was about five, and she had no idea what she had gotten herself into. I began to play every season I could and eventually went to play for more competitive teams as I got older. I dreamed of being the very best. When I was about seven, I got some advice from a coach that I've kept with me to this day and it was to keep working hard and it'll pay off. I stayed with this mentality through practices and trainings ever since. My mom has also told me countless times that everything happens for a reason, and I've applied this to more than just soccer. Whether I've had issues with a bad coach or lost an important game, I always tried to believe it happened for a reason. My soccer career has had many ups and downs and they've shaped me into the person I am today. I've always been hard on myself when I make mistakes, but soccer has taught me to try and put it behind me and keep going. I've had a personal record for a while that kept track of how many penalty kicks I made in a row, but when the day came that I finally missed one, I was furious at myself. This taught me that sometimes I'm going to make mistakes and I have to learn to accept them, even though I don't want to, and to keep moving forward by improving myself and being better the next time something similar happens. I mentioned before how I dreamed of being the best soccer player ever. Well, that didn't last very long. When I was growing up, I never knew what I wanted to be, and I always got asked that same basic question, what do you want to be when you grow up? At first, it was a veterinarian, but once I realized I'd have to deal with dogs dying, I threw that out the window. Soccer was my next option. I'd answer with a professional soccer player, and that was the end of the conversation. The only real dream I've ever had was to go to college, and I still have that dream. However, I've added soccer to it. I hope to get a scholarship for soccer so I can play for a college team, and I work hard constantly to try and make my dream come true. Surprisingly, I do have a life outside of soccer. Church is where I've met some of the most kind-hearted and loving people I know, and people I can count on to stick by my side. 
I've met some of my closest friends there, and I cherish all the memories I make with my high school ministry. My leaders have guided me through some of the most rough patches in my life, and I don't know where I would be without their help. I go to Hume Lake every year with my church, and it's the perfect escape from reality. The views are gorgeous, and I get to spend a week away from my busy life to reconnect with God and get to hang out with my friends. Whenever I come back, I feel like I've been recharged and ready to start the next year. I'm not close with very many people, and I have my select friends who I actually consider myself to be close with, but I do have my best friend who I can always rely on. I met Mia in the first grade, but we never really got close till seventh when we both were going through similar situations and decided to start talking more. Ever since then, we've been like sisters. I love her, and I know I can count on her to be by my side through anything. We laugh and are able to be ourselves around each other, and I see her as a sister, even though I'm an only child, and I never want to lose our friendship. The transition to high school was very rough for me because we weren't going to be going to the same school anymore, and I barely knew anyone at my new school, but I knew she'd be able to be there for me, and I'm so thankful for her friendship. We don't talk or see each other as often, but I feel like all the trials we've been through has only made our friendship stronger. Along with Mia, I also have another person in my life who I'm very close with. His name is Matt, and I met him in the middle of my freshman year. He's helped me change my outlook on life and helped me develop a more positive attitude as well as help me with my insecurities. Thanks to him, I feel more confident in myself and I'm able to be myself without trying to make everyone else happy or like me. He's always by my side supporting me and helping me along the way, and we actually started dating at the beginning of sophomore year. I can't wait to see what adventures we'll go on together, and I'm thankful to have someone so caring by my side. Now that the help from the closest people in my life, I would still be the super negative person I used to be and always put myself down for things I couldn't even control. If I could give any advice to anyone, it would be that there is good in every situation, regardless if you can see it or not. One of my favorite Bible verses, Romans 8:28, says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. I live by this verse, and I fully believe that there is good in any situation life may throw at you. Whether it's moving to a new school or getting some hard and unexpected news, always try to find good in it because there is a reason why it's happening. I met some of my favorite people in life through hardships and I wouldn't trade them for the world. I've learned some of the most important lessons in life during bad situations and low points in life. Find positivity and the bad that happens now will turn into good later. It just takes time to see. I'm beyond grateful for the life I live. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Thanks for listening to my last lecture project.